What is going on, guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about 11 changes coming in the final shape that some of you may not have heard about or some that kind of flew under the radar. There's a lot of changes coming in this new update on Tuesday, but there are things that I think a lot of people may have not heard about or just kind of looked over when all this big information about all the other stuff came out as well. So today I want to talk about 11 things that some of you may or may not have heard about that will be in the new major update come Tuesday. First of all, the HUD update. They will be changing how the HUD works. It will feature two new locations where important information will appear. The activity information such as wipe mechanics and modifiers will be displayed at the top center of the screen just below the health bar. Meanwhile, things like weapon info, uh, activity perks, things like that will be located just above your super bar. Uh, super bar. Even more, they wanted to help out some of the colorblind players out there. So all of the green buffs and red buffs now have a thick line weight on top and bottom respectively to make them easier for colorblind players to read. So those um, visual buff and debuff, you know, things that you have seen in the past will look a lot brighter now on the screen. For anyone that's not colorblind, you will be able to, you know, see that thick border around them. But if you are a colorblind player, this should make it easier for you to see exactly what buff or debuff is kind of up at any particular time. Of course, the next thing is legendary shards. Bungie will be removing legendary shards from Destiny 2 when the final shape launches. So if you have a lot of uh, legendary shards on you still, make sure that you're using them, buying things from Xur, going to the moon, buying the fragments, uh, and then turning around, you know, pretty much and keeping those in your inventory and you can save those for glimmer later during the final shape. It's not really a great ratio right now to spend that on, but you're either going to lose the legendary shards in general, or, you know, you can make a little something off of them in the end. So that's pretty much what I've been doing with mine is trying to make sure that they're all gone. Of course, by Tuesday's update, really, you might want to make sure they're all gone by tomorrow because on Monday, June the 3rd, the game's going to be down for about 24 hours. So today is probably pretty much going to be the last day you really have to spend those legendary shards before they're gone. Once the update launches on Tuesday. Um, they're going to make some changes to kind of how this works now once you break down something instead of getting legendary shards. So when you dismantle items in the final shape, so for example, exotic armor will give you 2,000 glimmer, uh, a 60% uh, 60 chance on like enchantment cores. Of course, you're going to get gunsmith rep as well. Legendary armor is going to be 1,000 glimmer and enchantment core at a 25% chance and some gunsmith rep. Uh, an exotic weapon will be 2,000 Glimmer and Enchantment Core at a 60% chance and 20% Gunsmith Rip. Uh, a legendary weapon, same kind of thing as the armor, 1,000 Glimmer and Enchantment Core at a 25% chance and a 10% or a 10, you know, kind of bump in your Gunsmith Rip. Uh, an exotic ghost will give you 15,000 Glimmer. A legendary ghost will give you 1,000 Glimmer and a rare item will give you 75 Glimmer. They said they're also removing the cost associated with pulling ships and sparrows from collections and that's kind of why they were not included in the list when Bungie talked about that but just keep in mind that will be there as well uh, some other things they're doing of course is more vault space I know that's something that everybody wants in the game and I know a lot of you right now are probably cleaning out your vault but you may not have to because with the launch of the final shape Bungie will be adding a hundred more vault slots bringing the total of how many vault slots we have to 700. Now, of course, if you're like me and you have to keep a lot of different stuff, keep a lot of different rolls of weapons, 700 still is probably not going to be enough, but hopefully we'll get some more in, uh, eventually. But 700 will be nice right now, even though we've had, you know, a lot of new things added into the game, you know, uh, over the last probably four or five months, six, uh, you know, the things Bungie has added in with Into the Light. But also we're going to have new weapons and new gear and new things of course, in the final shape, so that 100 extra slots will be great. Um, some other things they're going to be doing, of course, is one thing that I know a lot of people may or may not have realized, and that's going to be artifice exotic armor and new ritual armor. Of course, exotic armor can now be upgraded after it has been fully masterworked, uh, granting a artifice mod slot. So this is going to kind of be the same thing that you would get from you know playing a dungeon on a hard difficulty. You have that extra mod slot on your gear. And if you have never, you know, done any of these dungeons in the past, that is, you know, how you get that gear. And that is also how you see some players having, you know, that extra mod slot on a piece of gear. But we've never had this option for exotics. So once you have that piece of gear fully masterworked, 
Uh, it comes at a cost of an exotic cipher and 10,000 glimmer. And you can have an artifice exotic slot on, or an artifice, you know, uh, mod slot there on your exotic pieces of armor. So for those eagerly waiting for a new ritual armor to grind, they can also have some good news about what they're going to do with this. Bungie confirms there will be brand new ritual armor sets coming in the final shape. They're prioritizing the delivery of new ritual armor sets along with the final shape to infuse some new looks. You'll be able to show off your uh, time in the Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit playlist. Uh, that's kind of how Bungie stated that. Wanting players to know, you know, if you're like, if you like to grind out those gear pieces, those new gear pieces, for just, you know, kind of the look, that will be something that is available. But the main thing they really wanted to kind of talk about with that was being able to, you know, give your exotic gear pieces those three mod slots, which is going to be a big thing. Of course, the Pathfinder, which is just a kind of change to how bounties worked. With the launch of the final shape, Bungie is going to introduce a new system called Pathfinder that will replace some of the core bounties in the game with a more rewarding and engaging system. They kind of wanted to, you know, change the UI up and, and make it a little bit easier to understand, you know, Pathfinder in the week, you know, kind of, of what you're doing or, you know, this kind of just in general of all of your bounties, all of your things you're going to do. Uh, it's going to be a little bit simpler to understand. Pretty much the same concept as how bounties work now. But just a bit of a rework to make it a little bit visually easier to understand and of course to change a few things up. But it's when you see, you know, some of your bounties maybe like in Gambit or something like that looking a bit different, just know that that's what, you know, kind of this is. This is just the way they wanted to give a better reward system for doing those bounties. Also, they're making changes to Xur. Uh, this was something that I was really hoping would happen because I know, you know, if you've played the game for a good long while, a lot of times Zer is not really as impressive. The items that he has would be as if you're a brand new player. So the revamp for Zer in the final shape is kind of something that I'm, I was really hoping for. They said they wanted to do two different things with Zer. They wanted Zer to feel really uh, kind of like a really exciting experience. And they wanted you to be excited to go to Zer to see what he was selling for that week. And right now, like I said, if you're, if you're a veteran player, that's not really... A thing that happens every once in a while you'll find some gear pieces maybe that are legendary that you don't have that you can put in your collection for transmog or you may find an exotic piece here or there that could be rolled better than yours but for the most part unless you're a new player Zer's not really as exciting as it used to be and they're wanting to change that up they're also wanting to change kind of the way you purchase things from him and they're wanting to do that with strange coins, which I find that kind of interesting. So it looks like strange coins are going to come back into the fold somehow. He, he hinted, uh, Blackburn hinted that, uh, one of the game developers there hinted that the strange coins will be brought back into the game through ritual activities, uh, Gambit, Crucible, and Strikes. But that's something that, you know, they, they wanted to do just overall is to, you know, change the way, you know, Zer, the Zer experience kind of, you know, is for everyone so you know every time you go to Zer on the weekend as soon as you know that Friday time hits and you can go to Zer Friday Saturday and Sunday they want to make sure that it's exciting to go to Zer to see what he's selling so it looks like we're going to be getting some big changes they didn't go into great detail of exactly how they're going to do this or what exactly he will be bringing of course I'm sure they're wanting to keep that a secret but it looks like we're going to be getting some pretty big changes to Zer overall also fire team power in the final shape, Bungie is making changes to power level and how it works in introducing fire team power. If you are a new or returning player who wants to jump into an activity with your friends, fire team power will allow you to do exactly that. Uh, fire team power, uh, power in the final shape, uh, the guardian with the highest power level gets the role of the power leader. All other fire team members will have their power level adjusted to five below that of the power leader ensuring a balanced and fair playing field for all participants. The adjusted power level only affects the difficulty of activities and the rewards you get from the activity completion will still be according to your actual adjusted power level. Additionally, power level leaders will receive a commendation boost at the activity completion. So that's something you know you can look forward to if you are playing with friends. And that, you know, maybe some of your friends are higher level than you are. They might get to play more. They may have played longer, whatever the case may be. 
but that is a, a pretty interesting idea. Also, a count-wide power level, which is something that I was really happy to see. Destiny 2 players that have you know more than one character, uh, it's always been kind of a grind to level all of your characters up. In the final shape, they will introduce a count-wide power. That means the gear rewards earned on any character will now drop with a power level uh, relative to the highest power character on your account. So if you level up your hunter and you want to switch to your titan or warlock, was kind of the example they gave, they will get the gear that matches your hunter's power level. So the stronger your main character gets, the better gear all of your characters can get. And I guess most of us do have a main character. I know some people only have one. Personally, I like and enjoy playing all three. I probably use my hunter and my titan more than I do my warlock, but you know, in general, it is going to be really nice to be able to see, you know, gear dropping for your other two characters, you know, compared to having to go out and grind gear on all three characters. So whatever character you have is the highest level, you know, you'll be able to get gear to drop on your other characters as well. And I think that is really great. Also, some other changes that they will be making, um, of course, in the final shape of, of some just small things that we already know about. Uh, you know, you're going to have new, uh, you know, subclasses brought into the game. We're going to have some changes for new supers and stuff like that. So those are things, you know, that just in general, a lot of players, I think, already know about. But one that I'm not quite sure that a lot of people have heard about is the power band and activity power update. Now, we did talk about how, you know, you're going to have account wide power and things like that. But the power bands or power level caps are un undergoing a significant adjustment in the final shape. Of course, they wanted to raise that power cap, particularly for newcomers. They wanted to make it a bit easier as well. So the soft cap will now require only 40 power to reach down from the previous 150, further lowering, uh, lowering the barrier to entry for new players. So right now, of course, when the final shape releases, the starting power level will be 1900. The power cap for soft cap will be 1940. The powerful cap will be 1990 and the hard cap or pinnacle cap will be 2000. So it's going to be a bit easier for newer players to get in to, you know, doing harder content. And I think that's a good idea. Also, they said their power disabled activities will be in also available in Destiny 2. The power disabled activities, everyone plays on equal footing regardless of the power level. Whether you're a seasoned guardian or just starting out, you can dive right into these activities without worrying about your power level affecting the gameplay. Uh, power level disabled activities include things like your campaigns on normal or legendary, seasonal story missions, free roam destinations, crucible, and some legacy content. Of course, things that are power level enabled activities in Destiny 2, you know, it's going to directly affect, you know, kind of your power level and how you grow stronger and progress through the game would pretty much be the same things that we've always had. Your Vanguard playlist, your Nightfalls, your seasonal activities, your exotic missions, your Trials of Osiris, of course, raids and dungeons. So anything, you know, before we could get Pinnacle gear from, that's kind of the same idea here. But they did make it so things like your campaign, story missions, free roam, crucible, and some leg uh, legacy content will have the power disabled on it. So that's going to be make it also a bit easier for some, some of the new players as well. In addition, Bungie is renaming some difficulty tiers of power enabled uh, enabled activities in Destiny 2's The Final Shape. Of course, the difficulties tier now at 1945 would be standard. Uh, of course, Advanced, which was previously Hero, will be 1995. Expert, which was previously Legend, will be 2005. Then Master will be 210. Grandmaster at 220. And then the Contest Mode for things like the day one raid, of course, in the first 48 hours will be 1965. So you might see some different, you know, names on things. Like I said, especially if you're used to the hero on nightfalls, that will now be advanced. And that legendary nightfall will now be called expert. Just a little bit of change there for the naming of the things, you know, that you're used to seeing. Now, when it comes to Master Raul, this is probably one of the biggest changes to me, uh, how Master Raul and Lost Sectors will work in the final shape for exotic armor. In this final shape, Bungie's made some big changes on how players can acquire exotic armor in Destiny 2, with Master Raul becoming the exclusive source for new exotic armor in the game. Uh, similar to other activity vendors in the game, Master Raul will also get a reputation system. Uh, Bungie explained that the more you decode engrams with Master Raul, the more you increase your rep uh, reputation with him, and once you have reached level 16, 
and reset his rank, you will gain access to a new tier of focusing that will allow you to purchase any piece of exotic armor for any character on your account for one exotic engram and one exotic cipher in addition to the previous focusing options. So in the past, we always, of course, had to go to you know, Lost Sectors and play them on, you know, Normal or Master, Legendary, whatever the case could be, to get those or a chance of those uh, armor pieces, those new exotic armor pieces to drop. Now that's changing. Raul is pretty much going to be that source. And I know a lot of you are hearing, you know, engrams and exotic ciphers and stuff like that. The, uh, the exotic engrams really aren't that hard to come by. They have talked about, you know, sources for the exotic ciphers. It seems like we're going to have different sources for those as well. So you won't just have, you know, just a few. You'll be able to make some, but it seems like there's a lot of things in this update that will take exotic ciphers as well. Because remember, we talked about, you know, actually making that exotic armor have those, you know, making an artifice. You could have three slots on those, uh, you know, pieces or that extra third slot. Um, it seems like that, you know, cipher is going to be used for that as well. So exotic ciphers are definitely going to be something highly sought after in the final shape. It says lost sectors will no longer drop exotic armor directly. Instead, they will drop engrams whenever they would have previously dropped gear with the same exotic drop rates. While Neomuna will still continue to drop the new exotic armor upon completing a Vex strike force encounter. Bungie will not be adding any new exotic armor to its loot pool after season uh, season of the wish. So just keep that in mind as well. And last but not least, if you are in a clan, the final shape and uh, in, in the final shape, Hawthorne is stepping into the spotlight with a brand new vendor reputation system for clans. Players can now earn clan reputation by completing activities with higher uh, or completing activities in general or higher difficulty uh, difficulty activity is giving more progress and playing with clan mates giving a larger bonus to progress which is a good thing to me because before the progress was a kind of slow especially if you had a smaller clan it says Bungie is also adding two new clan bounties one for dungeons and one for seasonal activities additionally clans uh, perk can uh, clan perks can are getting a total refresh with some exciting new rewards including Ascendant Alloy, bonus crafting weapon progress, and more. So you're going to get some changes to each clan level at 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So overall, like I said, there's a lot of changes coming. There's still, of course, you know, the prismatic uh, new subclasses. Of course, we have new supers coming into the game. But I kind of wanted to go over these 11 things in the final shape that were kind of flew under the radar for some people because all of the other big news of all of the other stuff that was coming out, I kind of felt like some of this stuff may have been missed because I looked over some of it myself in general. So I uh, hope this guy kind of helped you guys out understand how much stuff is coming with the final shape here in just a few days when it launches. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about it and let me know, uh, you know, how excited you are for Tuesday because I know I'm ready to play the final shape and hop in and enjoy the game. Of course, leave me a comment with your thoughts. And if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.